All right, in this example, we are um, given that a water company employee measured the water level in a reservoir um, during the month of March and computed the average rates of change and put them in this table. Okay, so this is kind of turning things on its head. Um, instead of being, gave, being given water levels and computing the average rates of change, now we're given the rates of change and we're asked to find some inf more different information. All right, now there are two big ideas in calculus. One of them is rate of change, which we've just been talk talking about. The other is accumulated change, which this starts to get into the concept of the accumulated change. Okay, so first of all, this is just asking, all right, what are the units of these average, rate of, average rates of change that we're given in this table? Because it doesn't say, right? It doesn't, doesn't say. But we can infer from the data that we're given that the water, that this uh, water level was measured in centimeters, right? The water level's measured in centimeters. And, um, you know, you can see here that the time intervals are measured in days, okay? So since T is in days, and water level is in centimeters, right? If we call let's let's call this y, then delta y over delta t, which would be our rate of change, right? That's the change in y over the change in in the t time in days, um, is going to be, um, is going to be in centimeters per day, okay? centimeters per day. That's what I would assume that these these uh, average rates of change are given in. Okay. Next part of the question is to interpret these average rates of change in context, in the context of the of the of the information given, right? So what is this telling us? Let's look at this first average rate of change. It says 7, and the time interval is from 1 to 11. So, all right, let's, the time, right, these, this, these are the days in March. So I would assume this is, this is March 1st, and this is March 11th, okay? So from March 1st to March 11th, the average rate of change of the water level was 7, 7 centimeters per day, okay? So what I would say is that from March 1st to March 10th, the water level increased because it's a positive rate of change, uh, by seven centimeters per day. And we can make a similar interpretation for the other time intervals, right? So the next one looks like the interval is from March 11th to March 16th, and the average rate of change of the water level was um, five centimeters per day. All right, and finally, um, you know, with the last time interval, we can just basically do the same thing. We're just going to change the numbers, right? So, um, so let me scroll down here a little more. Um, and so I got some room here, but you know, we're just going to say that, okay, now we're looking at from March 16th to March 31st, right? Now the average rate of change is still increasing, but it's increasing only by three centimeters per day. All right, so those are our interpretations. And so now the next question is asking something very different from what we've seen in the past. Um, so now we, we're looking at, for each time interval, what was the total change in water level? So like I said, um, this idea of accumulated change is uh, the other big idea of, in calculus. So you might be wondering, okay, how do we do that? Well, just recognize that, you know, if we're looking at rate of change, average rate of change, we're taking the change in y, okay, so we'll say that y is our um, water level, um, over the change in, in this case, it's t, it's time, so I might as well like it, make it t. So let's call that m, right, because we said it was slope. I can rearrange this equation, right? So I can rearrange this as the total change in, um, in, y, which is water level, is just going to be um, delta t times m, or I could write it as m delta t, how about that? m times delta t, right? Just multiplying both sides of this equation by delta t, and I get y is equal to m times delta t. 
Okay, so what I can do if I've got the, the average rate of change, if I multiply it by um, the change in t, then I can get the accumulated change over that time period. So let's look at the first time period. So this is the time period from March 1st to March 11th. Looks like it doesn't necessarily include the 11th. All right, so it's over the first um, 10 days of March, right? So um, delta y then is equal to um, the average rate of change, which we saw in the table was seven. You can't see it right now, but the table's uh, too high. Um, but the average rate of change was seven centimeters per day. And let's change, let's, um, let's multiply that by the delta t, which is going to be 11 minus one, right? Those are our t values. So we get a total change of uh, 70 centimeters. So that means over the course of that first 10 day period, um, the water level rose by 70 centimeters. All right, so now we can look at the next time interval between the 11th and the 16th, not including the 16th though. Um, our delta y, now in this case, um, our rate, average rate of change was five, right? Five centimeters per day. And then we're gonna multiply that by the number of days. So 16 minus 11, so that looks like that was a five day period. So we get a total change of 25 centimeters, right? It makes sense if you if the water level is going up by five centimeters a day over five days, it's going to be a total change of five, um, 25 centimeters, right? Because you've got uh, five five seven centimeter increases. All right, so um, 16. We're going to look at now um, the interval from March 16th to the 31st, not including the 31st. All right, so um, the change is going to be, let's see, our average rate of change was three centimeters per day. And how many days is that? We're just going to take, oops, 31, 31 minus 16. So what is that? 15 days, right? So uh, 3 times 15 gives us 45 centimeters. So over that 15 day period, um, the water level rose by 45 centimeters. Okay, so that's it for that question. That's just telling us over each time interval, that's how much the water went up. Now we can also look at over that whole time period, right? The, the time period from over the whole month, if you add all these up, you get 140 centimeters. So that's the, that's the total change over the whole month over uh, the, the um, over the whole month. Okay. All right, now the next um, thing we're asked to do here is to, let's see here, I gotta get this thing to scroll down. <laughs> okay, so sketch a possible graph. All right, so we want to graph the water level over time, right? We're only given information about the rates of change, but now we want to try to graph the water level over time. So, so I'm going to put water level on the y-axis. You'll have to excuse my, <laughs> my, my drawing here, but uh, and then we're going to put, um, oops, sorry, not x, right? It's going to be t time. It's going to be the day of the month, right? So t is the day of the month, and we'll call this y and it represents the water level um, in centimeters. All right. All right, now we actually cannot draw the actual graph because we don't have enough information. So we're just draw drawing a possible graph. All right, we know we've got information now based on the previous part of this problem as far as the um, the total change in the water level, but we don't know what the initial water level is. So that's the problem. So we have to start on day one. Let's say this is day one. We have to start at some water level, okay? And then um, let's see, we have information about what, day 11? So I'll just try and relatively uh, draw where day 11, let's say day 11 is Day 11 is here, day 16 maybe would be here, and then finally day 31 is way out here. All right, and um, and so, you know, if we go back up, actually, let me, can I scroll back up just a hair? 
and so we can see what our total changes are. So over this, the first 10 days from day 1 to 11, it increased by 70 centimeters. Okay, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're about, maybe about there, right? And the next it's only 25. So we went up a little more and then we went up 45, but there was a, it was a longer time period, right? So 45, maybe out here. Okay, so you can see the, the rate of change is slowing down, right? Initially, we've got a 7 centimeter per day uh, rate of change, right? And then it goes down to 5 centimeters, so it's a little shallower. And then we're at 3 centimeters per day, right? So the rate of change is growing down. So the slopes are, you know, if I look at the slope between these two points, I should get um, 3 centimeters per day. Whereas if you look at this slope, it's five, and this slope here is um, seven. Okay, so the slopes are just getting shallower. And so that's a possible graph. Um, now, again, we don't know what this point is. We don't know what the initial water level is. So it's not, um, this is just, this is just a, you know, we don't know, uh, this is just an arbitrary point I picked. So, because we don't actually know um, the initial water level. Uh, the initial water level. So I just had to pick an arbitrary point as the start. Um, but there you go. There's a there's a possible graph of the water level. And the the key feature that I'm looking for here is that you're showing that the slope is decreasing um, over time. All right. So that's it for this um, set of lecture notes, and I'll, I'll meet you in class.